here. All right. Since the recording's in progress, we're going to start the meeting officially now. It was unofficial before that. Yeah, we were just calling jokes and stuff. Okay. <laughs> you want to call it there? <laughs> All right. Um, first order of business is road report from Mr. Hoyt. Well, I'm trying to buy a truck. <laughs> and the longer we put it off, the longer it takes to get one because we're out. Even if we agreed on something, we're out 18 months at least. What's the difference between a 4,500 transmission and a 4,700 transmission? Well, the difference is... $5,000. Well, I see. I don't really feel it's necessary to have it, but uh, it was. it is offered. It's. It's got two deep, it's got two deep reductions for frontwards and backwards. So, so, you know, it's got two reverses instead of the, the just the way it is. Yep. And uh, in some cases, yes, that's a good feature, but uh, it was just one that I'm bringing up to you for the fact that uh, uh, there are times that would be really handy. I just, I'm not 100% sure that, you know, my own talking, I'm not 100% sure that it's necessary to have. Mm -hmm. We've been getting along with the last 10 wheels with the same transmission. And uh, I, I went out looking around a little bit today at a couple of new bodies and this and that. And that uh, Viking equipment doesn't seem to scare me much. And it is a savings. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Truth of the matter is, we got to go to, uh, you know, almost to uh, Concord, New Hampshire, to get it worked on, or we go to Burlington and get it worked on. Is Viking in Burlington? Yes. Yeah. Who sells Viking? Oh, uh, Viking. Oh, they got a company. Yep. Yeah. Viking kites. Hmm. Can you read off that stuff so John knows what we're talking about, Mike? Um, we got a Freightliner truck. Um, be the cabin chassis with a 4500 transmission and the total after the trade would be $84,667 no, the Freightliner with a better 4700 transmission after the trade will be $89,382. And they're offering us a trade-in of $55,000 um, for our old truck. And um, an international after the trade-in is $66,739. they are actually um, offering us $12,000 more trade-in. Um, we've got three different prices on plows and bodies. Um, Tenco being $93,350. Viken that Rodney was just talking about in Burlington, $86,800. And an Everest um, body is $107,950. So you're using the Viking price on this total? Yes. Um, if you got a, if we got the Freightliner um, with the body, it's going to be $171,467. And that's for the cheaper transmission. Yeah. So there you go. What's the international? Oh, the international with the body is 153,539. You have a preference? I actually do have. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I explain myself, and that is that uh, 
uh, all the other trucks we have, which I guess I should back up. If uh, if we need an international, we need an international. Uh, but all our other trucks are freight liners. I think over the eight years of owning the truck, you probably lose every dime you saved and just paying people to take it and, and bring it back. What? And, What's the international got for an engine in it? Uh, Is it that Max Force? No, or? no, it's a it's a newer. Uh, I was never, I should have wrote that down because I really don't know what that does have in it. That's all right. Yes. All right. But the uh, freight liners got the Detroit. Right. And uh, I guess my only argument would be is that. Uh, Lots of times, truck needs a quick repair, and they've got where we can't do it here. And a man can jump in the truck, be in Lebanon in a half an hour, and uh, he can get the truck repaired, and they'll be back here for the snowstorm. Uh, if it goes up to Underhill, it's gone. It's gone for all day at least, or it's gone for several days, and and you will need to take it up, leave it. That's two people take right. it down. I mean, I'll go back and get it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not big on spending the extra money, but I am. I think, in all reality, you are going to lose it one way or the other. Yeah. Will you take a cut and pay if we get a freight liner? <sighs> Almost worked for nothing as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Comes July first, you'll you'll feel better. Yeah, that was kind of harsh, wasn't it? You didn't love that one. Yeah, the only way only way I make money is on my part time job. (laughs) (laughs) You get time off. If you guys would uh, want to be. Snow to stay until Monday morning. I'll be happy to follow rules. <laughs> right, John, do you have any input or questions of Rodney on trucks? Um, Rodney, how do trade ins work? You know, if, if tomorrow you signed up for this, but it's 18 months out, do, do we get to drive <clears throat> Larry's 10 wheeler for the next 18 months too? These, and then they, these quotes are based on the fact they won't get their hands on this truck for the next 18 to 24 months. So even if our truck's two years older, they're still going to honor the 55000 yeah, They'd actually give us more today if we could get rid of it today. Right. right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. okay. And I, I haven't got it all figured out yet, but this this... You can either buy the bear truck with the one year warranty, or we can, it's going to be roughly another $10,000 no matter which company you go with, but you can get a five year almost everything covered, except for there, there is a list of what ain't, and what is, and uh, I'd be more than happy to leave this with you folks and you can look through it and the next time we meet we discuss it some more but that's one of the options of uh, what's covered on a freight liner and what ain't <laughs> quite a little bit to look at so i didn't think i'd get it done here today well how about if we make up our minds and make make the decision next meeting is that that's okay or? Uh, what do you need to make up our minds tonight? Well, my, my real problem is, is uh, and trucks, uh, we already lost out for this quarter. There are only four quarters uh, in the whole year. And uh, we've already lost out on this one. So it means that we won't receive anything until at least late uh, February, early March if everything goes really good. And then that means just a chassis. It doesn't mean the truck's ready to run. It just means we have a chassis to send off to a body shop that will probably take another two months to get it up and back to us. Because right this minute, the body shops are standing still, but they won't be is is, uh, because all these trucks eventually break free and 
be, be on that doorstep to be worked on. Mm -hmm. But the warranties, I told the guy, that I couldn't really tell you if I can get a warranty package this week, but I would get one to go with one of these trucks at the next meeting. And he, they said that was fine. Oh, okay. That wasn't a big deal. We could take as long as we wanted on the warranty because trucks are almost a year out. How much does a warranty cost? That's well, going to be roughly, uh, if you buy, you buy the, sort of the best one, it's going to be up around 10000 bucks. Yeah. Wasn't that what it was for the last truck? Mm, well, uh, it, it, it was quite a bit of money. Uh, it didn't cover as well as this one does. Right. So quite, it wasn't, quite wasn't, so bad. wasn't complaining. I guess I was commenting that you know, how well, many years ago we bought your truck and the price hasn't gone up much. But we have, uh, our, but we have experienced some major repair bills that most of the time would be covered if we bought the extra warranty. Yeah. And we've paid through the nose a few times, and I just want to try to watch out for that. Yeah. So you'd like a a, a motion tonight to I'd buy like to a truck? Get a truck yeah. ordered that way. That way we stay within. You know, maybe we'll get it in February because the last thing I want to do is we wind up hanging on to our truck too long. Right. And then we don't get. That right. for it, right. <laughs> but I never have had to deal with the fact that we're going to wait up to two years to get a truck. I couldn't tell you what that truck is going to do in the next two years. <laughs> oh, it's going to hold together nicely. Well, Gary, Gary, uh, well, when were we supposed to replace the ten wheeler? Was it next year? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So that, that's why we're that's why Rodney's kind of jumping the gun because figuring that we aren't going to get it for a year and a half right right and we have money enough in the equipment account to pay for it or we will by the time it comes for sure because as of July 1st we should have a couple hundred thousand in there mm -hmm. <coughs> I would entertain a motion from I somebody. make a motion that we buy the Freightliner with the 4,700 transmission with a Viking body, which would be a total of, well, roughly, bring a calculator with you. Don't fall asleep. I'm on Becky's desk, straight back. <laughs> Thank you. With the 4,700, we can boost most all of it for almost the same money up to seven years instead of five. Mm -hmm. We should probably, we should add the five or seven year warranty to that too, Mike. Okay. That sounds, I mean, given what I've heard of Chelsea Ooh. and Versier, they've had some new trucks that have had problems too, so it probably makes sense. Um, the Truck and body would be 176, 182. Um, if we add the warranty on it, it's going to be 186, 182. Ooh. <laughs> so is that your motion? That's my motion. All right. I can I buy, say. buy a nice farm for yes. three quarters of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did you second that, John? I wasn't paying attention. I did. All right. I guess we've discussed this enough, so all in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimous, Mariah, wherever you are. All right, moving on to other business. Roads. That didn't hurt near as bad as I thought. <laughs> Anyways. Especially uh, after the rude remarks. I didn't make none that I know of. <laughs> But anyways, uh, how was it coming over the hill? Um, you know, spots that are not good. 
I mean, not horrible, but they're just ready. Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's not drying out. One day we thought that uh, things were looking really good, and then we get another two days rain, yep. and brings up another layer of frost, and yep. it seems well, like we're I, right back to where he started. When I was coming through, I said, geez, Rodney, another couple of weeks could slip over here and shape the road up and be kind of nice. And then um, I guess just my side of Timmy Benson's there, it's a little ruddy and juicy. And then Peter Button's Hill is all humped up and wet. And, and there's a couple other spots, you know, that are just not dry. Yeah. I, I, I've been on several roads that I thought were going to be done with, and uh, they are trying to catch little cars now. <laughs> <laughs> Not this bad. Yes. <laughs> oh, Moody, Moody Road, somebody pulled over on the shoulder too far, and they are down in the ditch. They still there? They were when I came home. Oh. Did, did you see him? No, I haven't. Nobody's called me about anything. I, uh, matter of fact, the phone's been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I expected this to be a terrible year for that, and people have been very patient with us. Good. What else you got? I am uh, outside of dealing with this mud. I, I haven't got too far with anything that we're going to be, uh, you know, got a couple grants that you're supposed to sign for tonight. Probably right here. And uh, we're, uh, could you tell me in there what they wanted for the Stratford Road? I, I haven't seen the price. The dollar amount? Yeah, it should be in there, Gary. Yep. Is it a municipal grant? Yeah. I don't know enough to read it. Stratford Road. Bottom line. Bottom line. Ooh. Oh. Picture Rodney driving down the road in a dump truck. Oh, it's right in the very bottom. At least this one is. Oh, it's $300,096,250. But that, that price also included the recreation road, which I wasn't sure if we were going to be looping into this as well because Pike came and gave us a quote for going down recreation road, but I'm not sure if the VTRANS grant will cover that arm of it i know we just wanted to get a quote on it so i think it was like half of that maybe like 148,000. if you look you'll, you'll see the pike bid and it should break it down by the road uh machine phase strafford 142 375. reclaim and fine grade strafford is 18,000. So you got 160, 160,600 and something. And then recreation roads 140. Unless there's a, something I ain't heard about, I ain't know, they're never gonna stick their neck out to do that over to the rec road because it's not a class two. Right. And this is the other one for Kipling Hill. Grant, did you want signed tonight for the bridge? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I, 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 uh, I, Belknap's going to get done this year. Yeah. This is the grant for yes. 239000 right. Yes. Two twenty for a bridge up by Janeway's on Kipling Hill Road. Yes. To replace the bridge up there. And it looks like it's according to the pictures. It's got some concrete and some old stones. And Rodney says it needs work. Um, it either needs work or it needs replacing. So, And the, the state man was there with me and he thought might just well replace it. 
So we're just applying for a grant right here then. Gotcha. Um, so Stratford Road is going to be a total of 16712. I think the grant is up to 200,000. So okay. Hopefully we can, because the road is so out of shape there, we're going to grind it as well as, yeah. so it can be graded right. back into shape where it belongs. I want to make a motion that we sign these or I sign these. I'll make a motion that one of us sign these. <laughs> these two grants, uh, one, one for paving, one for bridge. One, yeah, one for paving the Stratford Road and one for what bridge? It's on Kibbling Hill Road. Kibbling Hill Road Bridge. Would you second that, Joan? I would. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I'll sign these. <coughs> Ooh. Anything else, Rodney? This is 2022, isn't it? Yeah. Estimated completion date October 15th, 2023. Yeah. Okay. Next year. Okay. <laughs> um. Let, well, I think I told you on the phone, Larry Pickett offered to maybe make some gravel and sell it to us. And I guess I'm leaving it up to you to follow through if you want. I'll follow up with Larry to see if there is some, what the price might be and all that stuff, if you well, want it. How, how do you folks feel about that? Well, how do you feel about You're it? You're the king of stone. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> any good? You, well, you mentioned getting some, some better stuff to put in mud holes next spring. And I don't know uh, if that worked better or not. I uh, like to at least look at it because I, I've been told I, I'm going to have more stone and I don't see it. So I, <laughs> it's it's a if it's there, then I'm happy. Yep. But if it's just you know, a little stone and gravel, I mean, a little stone and <laughs> sand, then I, that's not going to work for mud. Why don't you contact him and write over and look at it or something? Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know if we'd be interested. I told him I'd at least come and look at it, but uh, McCullough's have, they have decided that maybe the towns ought to be happy with the stuff that they buy. And so they're gonna, they're gonna make material that's got less powder in it, and more stone. Is that what you want? Yeah, because I mean they have they have stripped it out. They've stripped it out to the point that it's uh very little stone and mostly powder. And when the rain hits it, well, we already know what that does. And uh, if if it did come through with a good mixture of stone that makes sense, and uh I still like to use the stuff over in uh Randolph, but there again, he has gone to doing the same thing that Ch Chelsea's doing. They're stripping all the product out of it and they're sending us a lot of powder. Yep. And uh, the, the powdered material is, I think, is, is uh, well, when you look at the mud, it looks just like that stuff that you see at the pit when you drive in when it's wet. <laughs> yep. And so, uh, uh, I, you need to need to get away from as much of that you can and more stone. Yep. All right, we'll leave it in your hands. Uh, I'll back and tell you what I find. All right. <laughs> That's all you got. You can leave. All right. Yeah. 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 Like oh, yeah. oh, wait. I just had one question. All right. Leave it to John. Come up with another question. There you go. <laughs> no, I just. I just wonder where we were on the uh, the town garage retrofit, and I mean, ideally, it might be a good sort of point to to have three different options, sort of what you did with the truck, and be like, well, we could build a new garage. We might be able to retrofit the old one, or you know, I don't know, have a have a some some combination of those two. <laughs> but we should probably well, keep I... moving moving ahead on it somehow. 
What I have gathered, and I think Mike will agree with me, and that is that we're down to talking with an engineer because we can't go any further without one. Everybody stops us in the tracks when we say we want to do something without that engineer involved. And so uh, we're, we're kind of stopped until we hire one. And uh, I talked to one and he wants, he, just to start, he wants $1,500, come down and say hi. <laughs> And that's really no joke. <laughs> I'd do it for 12. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> and All right. So, well, so I, you know, so I don't know when you want to start well, let's putting keep, that money into it. Let's keep pursuing it. Because, Just not forget it. Because it's not going to go away. Well, I understand that. But, that, but I really, our next step is to hire one to come and Look well, over then, then we probably, I don't know, do you know ones to talk to or you got different ones uh, lined can, up? Or? Once you tell me I can get one coming, I can find one. I, 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 well, I why, why don't job. you get one coming? Okay. And what you said just 1500 to have someone come and say hello. I mean, do we actually get a, a little mini report out of saying hello or? Not really. <clears throat> And it's hundred dollars an hour after that, or it's something like three hundred dollars after that. Yikes! I want to be an engineer when I do. <laughs> well, I I would just just pick one that that you you know think think has integrity and you like working with Rodney, and we'll 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 find the money for it. All right, we will. All right, thank you very much. All right, keep Thanks, up Rodney. Work. Thank yeah. you, Rodney. You're welcome. I used to have a train set and that qualified as being an engineer. Yeah, a former engineer. Former engineer. Yeah. All right, at 610, it says library bike discussion, Mariah Lawrence. All right, I'll go, I'll do this as fast as I can. Um, so you might remember the community conversation that I had at the library. I had one at the library, one online, and then a very informal one during the after school program. Um, and it all stemmed from a grant that I received last year, um, a Libraries Transforming Communities grant that the American Library Association um, puts on. And in order to spend the $3,000 that you get from this grant, you have to have a community conversation, which will help decide how you're gonna spend the money. It was all for the after school program was, that was like the basis of the grant. And what, what do we want to do with it? And it's, I mean, the after school program has been going really well. I don't know if you realize that there's 31 kids at it every Wednesday. And so the fence has made things so much better. Um, but it's so much fun and the kids are having a blast. And um, the thing that came out of the community conversation was uh, basically that we wanted bikes and um, to ride down to the fairgrounds. You know, we could take a group of kids down to the fairgrounds. A lot of those kids actually don't know how to ride a bike. And um, what? I know. I'm pumped to <laughs> teach them. And um, so I printed out some of these. These are, these are just so you're aware, these are like mock up um, promotional flyers. I wish I had realized how many people would be online because I can hold it for the um, Yeah. Hold on. But um, anyways, this is, this is just like the outcome of the conversation, what we want to do with it. And, um, and yeah, so I have enough money to get like six to eight bikes. I've got a quote from the gear house here. I'm on, and um, the fairgrounds people did approve this um, from 3 p.m. 3 p.m. on Monday through Friday, which if there's anyone that was at that meeting on right now, I'm hoping that after people sort of see how low key this is going to be, because it'll be available for the after school program and for patrons to check out during other times of the day. You know, like if a family with a toddler, because we'll have those bikes with no pedals that you just like walk with um, as well. So anyways, um, and these are like little, you don't need these. But I got um, Tavian Mayor? Mayor to um, write up waivers. So he's, I did write up some terrible waivers that he like made <laughs> awesome. So um, I, I, you know, I don't know YouTube so much. You want one? Yeah. Okay. And you want one of these too? Yes. As well. Um, you guys can make these too. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just hoping that you guys agree that this is 
going to be beneficial to the community and um, we'll store them in the basement for now is the idea. Um, maybe in the future we'll fundraise for a small shed. Uh, they'll be all size of bikes and we'll have a um, calendar of fairground events. So there won't be any bike lending during fairground yeah. events, but there's no weekends anyways at this point. Right. That's what the fairgrounds people approved to be Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. on, so. So if I want to borrow a bike, I can. Yeah, you can. Nice. Yeah. Mariah? Yeah. W will you keep the waivers on file? So, right, if Gary signs a waiver, you know, tomorrow he could ride the next year. He doesn't have to sign a waiver every time he rides. Yeah, so that was, um, we decided that the kids could do one um, for the after school program, one per session. And then I think Tavian was trying to decide the timeline for that because um, he was worried that people would like claim they didn't sign one if it was like a year later or something like that. So maybe we'll, we'll update them at a regular basis. But that was something that we talked about today because I didn't want the kids' parents to have to sign every time because I wanted that to be something the kids sort of directed like when they arrived, you know, they wanted to sign up for a slot that day <laughs> if we had their their paperwork on file, they could do it. So Betsy has a question. Yeah. Um, are helmets, are you getting helmets? Yeah, yeah. I called the South Royalton Health Center because like we always buy helmets there for $10. So I'm like, they must have a good connection for helmets. Um, and they gave me the information. So I'm on that. Yep. And I was thinking of, I don't think I need a lock. I can't foresee any reason that we would need a lock because they'll be in the basement. But that was the only other thing I thought about getting. Oh, and I'm leaving um, like $500 actually is what I would like to have left at the bike store for repairs, for future repairs. So I was actually relating them. I'm like, yes, I'm, I want to stay close because I don't want to be driving bikes to Burlington to be fixed or what, you know, I want these guys who are going to sell it to me at the gear house is where I hope to buy them from. And that's where I got the quote from. Um, that I liked best and to like leave a store of money there so that we have set repairs done. Where is the gear house? In Randolph. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fairly new and yeah. um, they were really helpful. A couple oh. of years right. ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a cool spot. All different size bikes. So there'll be one adult bike for you, Gary. Yeah, does it have pedals? It does. Oh. Yeah, you can have pedals. So, yeah. Biking farmer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flying by. What do you think, George? You're a professional biker. Do you think it's a good idea? <laughs> I think it's an awesome idea. I really do. I also, I think you should have a uh, a bike repair day at the library and have a few of us come down and just fix people's bikes. Yeah, if that's something, a skill you have, I definitely um, am, yeah. am really interested in that. I wanted to teach people how to fix bikes mostly. I, I don't have any idea how to fix bikes, so yeah, that would be awesome. That would be really, really great. Yeah. And there, there are quite a few bikers in town out there. I mean, absolutely, you know, yeah. absolutely, yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Bike repair day. I love that. And the kids are super excited. Actually, even though you thought your idea was silly when you called me to say like that the thing you like to do most is like have a peanut butter and jelly after <laughs> school. It turns out that's how like how everybody feels. They've got like this simple memory of something they did after school that was the best. And you could probably see on this paper that um while most people wanted to do something really simple, like eat a PB&J or hang out with grandma or ride their bike, 12% of kids who answered this wanted to learn to do a flip. On a bike? Just in general. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know is so great that that was like the response. Like some that couldn't write the words do a flip, just drew a picture of someone doing a flip. And yeah. <laughs> it's like, we can't give you that, but we can give you bikes. <laughs> I think that um, there's a pump trick that's connected maybe with the gear house yeah and kids love oh yeah don't worry i'm thinking of that in the future would be a pump track would be amazing i don't know if you guys have seen i've heard of them yeah in randolph we've uh definitely played there a lot it is so fun if we could find the space for a pump track in tunbridge it would be like it uh, awesome that's something kids can do in a small area where adults can watch them yep and they teach them all the basic skills of moving your weight and makes it just really fun and super accessible. No big hills you got to climb right. up. Right? Mm -hmm. It's an investment. Yeah, I talked at length with um, Zach 
Freeman yeah. about the pump track idea and he was all for it and telling me, yeah, that um, it, it is a process, but the grant money is 100% available. Like if we had a space for it, it, it would not be difficult to find uh, funding for something like that. I mean, there's so, especially if it was connected to the after school program. I mean, I purposely didn't write several grants last year because I was afraid of what I would do with so much money. Oh <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, because it can be kind of a burden. Yeah, it's a, it's a. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning. So, how much space does that take, George? I mean, square oh. footage or whatever. Um, you could do a tiny one within the square footage of this building. Yep. Yeah. Barry, mm -hmm. is there room up potentially by the pavilion in the town garage, town forest? Well, that's what I was thinking. We could. Incorporate that with the down forest. <clears throat> yeah. At the, at the pavilion up top. Yeah. Yeah. Or somewhere near the town garage, there's, there's a lot of empty space there, but we'd have to place it strategically so it didn't get in the way of the road crew. Right. And as long as it doesn't get in the way of um, the little Fenway. Oh. Remember that. <laughs> that's, my, that's my best idea. <laughs> now, that would be a cool spot. Yep. The pump track I've seen was mobile, like you could set it up, you could move it oh. and set it up. Oh, yeah. And I've oh. seen those, yeah. The wooden yeah. ones, yeah, those are cool. Yep. So, yeah. yes, John. Oh, I was just going to say, Michael Saka has his hand up. Yeah, oh. I just wanted to uh, uh, briefly uh, say that the Ranger is um, uh, in, in ABC are collaborating for June 11th. That's the day before the Ranger. The typical ranger rate and we're going to have a bike clinic bike safety uh, bike helmets available um and um, some sort of bike repair stuff look kind of light on that but something that the four towns are going to be invited to and um uh, uh, just a heads up on that june 11th thank you good information that's awesome <laughs> all right so did we no, I'm totally lost. Did we have to vote on something for you or you've just- Well, I just was wanting to check all the boxes, to talk to the fairgrounds people on the select board. And also, you know, it'll be a very large, you know, it'll be $2,500 check that Becky will write. So I wanted to be sure to just not have it be a surprise mm -hmm. for anyone. See, so I don't know if you have to vote on it because I wrote a grant, but no. as long as you don't- I don't think so. Disagree, then yay. All right. Yeah. Good idea. Thanks. I'll look forward to riding a bike. All right. See you down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gary, Gary wants yeah. one of those like banana chopper bikes from the 70s. Mm -hmm. That's what I had when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. We have one of those now. So. Yeah. You can have a sissy bar on it too. <sighs> yeah, that's exactly what we have. The big seat. Yeah, yep. that's exactly what we got. Yeah. You have a playing card on the spokes? Yes. I get you thrilled somehow <laughs> when you're 12 years old. All right, is that all you have for us? Yes. That's all right. It. We're already running late, so let's forge ahead. You want to tell her she can leave? Yeah, you can leave. You can stay. Thank you. I'll stay a little and then I'll Okay. Leave. Right. Think of a good joke. All right, legal trails discussion, Paul Gillis. And I thought maybe if, if it's okay with Paul, we might take public discussion ahead of time, at least a minimal amount of public discussion. And then, um, then Paul would kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. And maybe you already have something, some idea, Paul. Uh, do you think that's a good idea or not? No, it's a great idea. Go ahead. All right. So I'm gonna set some ground rules. Um, I'm gonna give everyone a chance to speak. And I'm going to limit you to two minutes. So get done what you want to get done early. And Mariah's going to be the timekeeper. I'm not quite sure if she's got an air horn or something she's going to blast or but, um Nice. And I'm anyway, just going to yell if, really loud. Uh, and, and if at the end, after everyone has spoken, um, you want to say something more, then just put your hand up and we'll do it again. All right, first up. How about George, you're sitting right here. Uh, well, yeah, Paul, I don't know how much you know about the situation, but um, basically, uh, Tumper just trying to get a little clarity on um, the, uh, the uses possible on the town legal trails. And um, 
we've had some trail, some some disputes with the uh, property owners, and uh, we're looking to uh, try and resolve the issue um, satisfactorily to both parties. Um, and uh, specifically, we're looking to maintain our right to ride bicycles, snowshoe, pogo stick, uh, uh, ski, walk, run on the trails, um, human powered uh, transportation or rec recreational activities. And um, that's it. Good job. Uh, anyone else? Oh, come on. <laughs> you want to click on got it? No, because I'll mess something up. You want to click on got it? Mar Mariah's going to do something. What do you want me to do? No, no. no the other Mariah. There was something oh, on the okay. screen. You needed a little help. Okay, uh, let's see. Todd, Todd Tyson. Todd Tyson's hands raised. Yep. You beat you. Uh, yeah, real quick. I'm glad that Paul's able to join uh, this meeting tonight. It's great. Um, so my question just is dealing with uh, potential maintenance of the four legal trails. My understanding is that um, the town has no duty to do any maintenance on the legal trails. But when there's a situation uh, where a big tree is down or there's some sort of obstruction or something needs to be looked at, that um, the select board does have the authority to either say we're going to do something or maybe um, authorize volunteers to go take the tree out. So my question is, is it up to the select board to decide whether there could be maintenance or is it up to the abutting landowner to do that? Uh, um, shall I try to address these as we go? Sure, yeah, that, that makes that thing makes the most sense. So sure, go ahead. Well, just a couple of thoughts. Um, <laughs> there's no obligation to maintain trails or class fours, uh, but that doesn't mean that the select board has no authority to do it and it has full power to uh, regrade or, or uh, put in culverts or whatever. There was, a, there was an issue a couple of years ago where class four roads were gonna be required by the federal government to have culverts. And it was a, a mini movement across the state to reduce the number of class four roads to avoid the high cost of uh, culverts. I don't know if that's still an issue, but, uh, but you, you're, uh, a person goes on a trail at his or her own risk. And uh, so it isn't, you, if you leave a log there and someone falls over it, that doesn't mean that someone's Met, well, so anyone can sue anyone, but it's not likely that you'd be liable for that. And at that original question was the hope that the trails would be used for non-motorized vehicles. That's, that's possible, but it's not through the uh, road layout process, but through an ordinance process. And a very simple ordinance would simply say, uh, legal trails one, two, three, and four shall uh, not uh, shall be used only for non-motorized traffic. And I guess that the question would be whether, you, or whether you're going to agree to have uh, mountain bikes, I guess. But, uh, but as long as you don't, you don't want motors, you can do that by an ordinance. You can do all four at the same time. And uh, it would be a relatively short process. Can you... Um make different rules for different legal trails? You can, and you don't have to have findings that justify it. You just say that's the way it is. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, George. And, the, and so to be clear, maintenance, the town is not required to do maintenance on these roads, but the town has the right to. Right. Okay. Uh, Todd, do you have your hand up again or do you just be able to take it down? Uh, I've taken it down, Gary. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Michael Saka, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, if a road, uh, say one of the legal trails is, uh, you know, restricted to walking only in, you know, 2022, um, in 2024, could that be changed or does it, is it a two way process? No, it's always reversible or amendable. 
Thank you. Uh, Betsy, did you have anything more to add? I was just going to offer um, if Paul had any questions about the ancient road process. I, I'm here to represent the ancient road committee. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that there is news that surprised everyone that was dealing with ancient roads when the Supreme Court came up with a decision last year that ruled that, in spite of what many of us thought, the official town highway map does not necessarily reflect all existing roads in Tunbridge. And, you know, we went through that relatively long process of finding ancient roads and getting them all ready so that July 1st, 2015, everything would be gone. I think the premise for everyone's mind was that if it was on the map, the official map, that it was a road or a trail, and if it wasn't, it wasn't. But the Supreme Court surprised everyone and read the statute that said that all roads must be on the official town highway map as of July 1st, 2015 to mean uh, that there still could be roads as long as they were cl clearly observable on the ground, which is a, a notorious way of describing something since you can use aerial photography to find things that you couldn't see on the ground itself, and that those roads continue to exist. So to those towns that have dusted their hands and said, oh, it's all behind us now, the lesson is that's not true. That's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes when you when the legislature tries to solve a problem, they don't reach far enough into it to solve it, and it becomes a kind of exercise. But it was a good exercise, I think. Many towns learned about their roads where they didn't know them before. We got local road experts who found it uh, a passionate interest in searching these things out. And frankly, there's still a lot more work to be done out there. George, you know. Okay, one more question. All right. Are there any laws that you know of that state that, um, that a property owner can control um, what the town can allow on its legal trails? No, the, t the town, once having obtained a, a, a public right of way over the property, controls that third, you know, whatever width it is, three rods or four rods uh, entirely. And the uh, relationship between the landowner and the town is uh, superior and inferior. So if you, the, the one advantage of a landowner is that when the, uh, when a, a trees or is to be cut, the, the wood must be offered to the landowner. It can't just be hauled away to the town garage. However, there is always this, there's always a, another factor in some of this. And that is that, um, Uh, the the up, upside of that principle is that a, a landowner can do anything that person wants to do on their property as long as it's not, as long as the town approves. So, for instance, if somebody wanted to, I mean, rarely do we see actions on where mailboxes should be or whatever, but if somebody wanted to change the location of their uh, driveway, they would, they would come to the select board and that can be worked out. But it really, the select board has, is, is all powerful in this area. And, and a, a, a landowner can't, you know, <laughs> build a barrier or uh, I, I get a sense of what it was like in early Vermont when they early on passed a law that said that it was a crime to dig holes in the, land, in the town road. And I got the feeling that people were filling in their uh, void areas by helping themselves to the gravel. <laughs> Um, just to step back a little bit, <laughs> so this ancient road thing, so if we had a, a road 
going through somebody's property that we thought was thrown up in 2015, we could now call that a road or a trail? If, you, if, it's, if it's clearly observable on the ground, it didn't get uh, discontinued by operation of law at, and, and on July 1st, 2015. Oh. So there's these little, uh, you know. So so what would that be? Would that be a legal trail, or or well, we go through with a grader and make it a class three road? Or? Well, you you a grader doesn't make it a class three road. The select board does. But if uh, but <laughs> any road that isn't designated as a one, two, or three is a class four, and and it doesn't there's. You have to make a trail, but the class four is a sort of default uh, when you haven't done anything. So those would be class fours. You wouldn't be obliged to keep them up. And you would want to have them, uh, but you might want to talk to the uh, people at AOT and see that it's on the map. I mean, it, it, the map really should be the foundation for understanding what roads you have. And uh, these little surprises are, um, are they're just going to lead to trouble that's all people and, and you know it's uh, i mean maybe it's just because of the office i hold but i but i every day i hear of people just having terrible times with fights between landowners and uh and and, and a lot of them go on the question it's not a town road it's my property so i'm barricading it and then we have struggles and lawsuits and all that so it, it's it's a great value to to say there that's where our roads are brenda yeah paul one of the questions that came up was in trying to deal with some of the trails if if we have to put a new culvert in where one wasn't with the more updated management of water wetlands uh, our road crew foreman said usually they get permission unless it's a, a call an existing culvert that they're replacing they get permission from the landowner also to do that i would more want more than just permission I, they just think about it this way um the the law of uh moving water if you want falls into two categories natural streams and unnatural streams where a stream has been forever and there's a culvert and that water ends up on someone's land, that's the way it is, that's nature. But if the road crew decided to replace, uh, say a, a cross road culvert and put water where it wasn't before, that's a taking and the landowner could sue you for the damages to that land. So it's extremely important to have the, I remember one time going to a town and we were out on the roads with the road foreman and the, some select board members and the and the road foreman was boasting about how successful he had been in making water bars to dry out the road but in the process this was up on camel's hump he was dumping water on everybody's property and soaking their uh, foundations and compromising their wells and and yet he thought he was should be getting a prize for it so you have to know where the water went once and then you would have to know how it would be if it needs to be rechanneled then you would technically you would want to go to the landowner and get an easement that allows that to happen now, that's not necessarily going to be easy to do but uh, but you wouldn't want to just have a conversation at the road or even a letter you'd want to have it in a deed right george what's um, just to clarify on that, if you had an existing body of water that flows across a legal town trail where there is no culvert, but um, could you put a culvert in to make that part of the road less muddy if the culvert does not redirect the water, it's simply... Sure. It's not, there's no prohibition against it, but there's no obligation for it. Right. But, it, so but it's something that would... You can put a culvert in anywhere you want. Uh, the problem, of course, is then the next landowner over says, he got one, now I want one. <laughs> so you have to be ready for an answer there.
Paul. I, okay. John. I, ahead, John. I would think when it comes to wetlands though, right, DEC would have jurisdiction over towns or landowners, right? If you were gonna improve- Oh, sure, if you're gonna drain right a away. wetland, uh, that's a, don't even go there, no. <laughs> and don't forget the buffer. <laughs> right. And as, as far as improvements, you know, if a landowner wanted to put hard pack on, on a legal trail or the town for whatever reason said, we want to put hard pack there, you know, are those both allowable as long as they didn't run afoul of say DEC jurisdiction? That's right. But it's always with the permission of the select board. There's no independent landowner authority to start fooling around with public rights of way. And I suspect you have a form somewhere that tells that invites the landowner to supply information on how they would want to work within the right of way, and you should have a process where the, the select board actually approves that, asks all the hard questions, gets a road foreman out there to see what makes sense. Yeah, and then how how are new rights of way created? Is it is it a deed or is it a easement? Public right of way is created after a site visit and a hearing before the select board. And if it's a brand new road where there's never been a road before, then the question is, what do you owe the landowner in compensation? Now, the old way used to be that there was a thing called a, oh, what was it called? A reservation road. I'm not sure that's the right word. Anyway, early on in some areas, and especially in your area, Stratford and Norwich, they they laid out they laid out roads where they wouldn't intend to have roads, so they could switch, so they wouldn't have to pay people for laying out roads across their property. They would just substitute this. There was a there was an eight rod road around every four lots in Stratford. Huh. Uh, but there's no eight rod roads in Vermont. Maybe there is in the interstate, but uh, that's not a town road. And that, but that I've, I've, I'm throwing that history away for right now because it's not going to help you. If, if you wanted to put a road where there wasn't a road, the landowner would have a right to say, compensate me. And how you make that decision is not necessarily easy, but it can be done taking into consideration the advantages and the disadvantages of a road. So usually putting in a road through somebody's property enhances the value of it. Occasionally you'll find a hermit who finds it offensive and will fight you all the way, but it's the select board's decision. It's not the landowner's acquiescence that makes the difference in laying out a new road. Hmm. Michael Saka, I see you're having a hand up. Yeah, I think I think you just um, may have answered uh, my question, but it was what what happens if the reverse is true? Like a, a landowner wants to propose to to, to move um, a, a a trail or a, a road. Well, I mean, it comes to the select board with a proposal. You say yes. You say no. It's uh, and 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 who would board the co bear the cost of something like that? Well, if I was on your select board, it would be the landowner. Because mm -hmm. you, I mean, unless there's some, you know, maybe it's a dangerous corner or next to a brook that washed out or something. I mean, those kinds of things can be done even without a formal process, as long as you're within the three rod right of way. So you could change the location of a road. You know, most roads of that size are like 18 feet wide, so you could slide it over, get it away from some area, there's a, a, very, a way of, uh, there's also a law that says that if you if you were on a road and it becomes impassable and you have to go off the public right of way that at least temporarily the public road becomes the uh, temporary uh, position of it. And it can actually change fully from the uh, uh, location as set by the survey. Uh huh. And that could be because of water coursing or a tree down or something like that. Any kinds of things. I, oh, I, there was something else I, I meant to mention. Uh, let's say I come to you and I say I want to cut the big tree that's at my driveway. 
and it's in the public right of way, and I'm and you're and I'm asking your permission for it. The tree warden now becomes the character that needs to be, and the and the Supreme Court has been very clear in saying that the tree warden has to hold his his or her own hearing. It can't be part of a select board hearing, and that person gets to make the decision in the end unless of course it's a disease tree and that's a different process but if it was just so people think they own their land they do own some of it but the town is in the superior position for it thank you all right Nate Stairs. thank you uh, hi Paul hi. um my client's uh, interest in the, the legal trail discussion I, is, um, is asking for a discontinuance, which is um, I think kind of what um, Michael Saka was just asking about. Uh, my client owns the uh, land under uh, legal trail four. Um, and uh, we've started a discussion with the town about the discontinuance and willingness to swap the legal trail designation for an easement. Uh, right now, the legal trail sort of ends in the middle of my client's property. Um, and my client is willing to, to turn that into an easement that goes all the way through his property with the potential to join up to uh, a neighbor's property as well. Um, and the real issue is you know, driving that is some of the control issues that you alluded to about being able to put up barriers and um, uh, not take gravel out of the road, but really with the desire of, of preventing uh, what's been some four-wheel drive use of the uh, four-wheel drive vehicle use of the road and causing erosion. I, I take it from some of the things that you're, you've said tonight that you would agree that there's nothing that would prevent the town from, from doing that if, they, if the select board so chose. No, nothing uh, to prevent it. I, I, it would be interesting to see a draft of the uh, would be a public right of way that the, your client would be giving to the town? The idea would be an, an easement uh, allowing the public to use the trail for uh, for walking and that would be the, the desire walking is to only. limit it to foot foot traffic. It's entirely possible that the town could do that it wouldn't be there's no legal reason not to do it I mean it's just a question of authority it does you know, so many of our roads just end nowhere. And that's given a rise uh, throughout the state of discontinuing what are essentially private driveways, particularly when years ago they used to plow them, which was worse than anything because of the expectations that came with it. But it was somebody's widow and, oh, you know, it only take two more minutes. So they'd go up and plow that and inadvertently convert that private driveway into a public road by the fact that they were doing the maintenance on it. <clears throat> but no, it's, uh, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I was sent a copy of a survey of, the, of Legal Trail 4 and the property. And uh, I th I, earlier, I don't know, I'm coming late to the party here, but there was some question about where Legal Trail 4 actually came from. And I looked yes. at the uh, maps and I saw that it was somewhere between 2010 and today when it was apparently laid out. But I I don't know how it exists unless you can find a formal laying out document for that. Yeah, we, we are questioning whether it was ever properly laid out, but we were kind of hoping to sort of sidestep that issue the, and just Vanessa, ask yeah. for a discontinuance to um, in, in exchange for the easement. Yeah, no, it's possible. I think that the town would be well advised to take a an interest in the in the powers of the landowner to restrict use on it. Uh, I think that's the whole question. If it's a public easement, can you shut it down in mud season, or can you shut it down because of misbehavior and I, I if i were one of the concerns i have along these these uh, road issues is and in relationship to discontinuance and it may not be effect, 
an issue in this particular case is that towns enjoy wide protections through sovereign immunity for highway work, for most highway work. A pri so, so I've had clients who said, I, this road is only serves my property. I want you to discontinue it. And then the, then the select board goes ahead and discontinues it and people continue to use it. And uh, accidents inure to the liability of the landowner and there's no protection for sovereign immunity. It actually happens more frequently when it's a class three that has been plowed and then the town says, well, that's too steep or whatever. So we're gonna make it a class four and then the landowner proceeds to do the um, improvements, and the maintenance, an accident occurs and the landowner is responsible for the negligent maintenance of the road. <laughs> so there are other issues that are involved here, but no, I agree with you. There's no legal reason why that couldn't be worked out. Thanks. You want to say something? Better? Well, I was, I was just going to um, <laughs> ask whether, you, uh, Paul, you got a um, a document that was information from the Agency of Transportation that Rudy, or I believe Rudy, maybe Mariah sent it, um, that had, had the D AOT documentation of when um, Legal Trail 4 was... Oh, okay. And if they were happy with it? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. they're the gurus. I mean, they're, they, they're more powerful than the select board. So they get, and, and they fought with towns. It was quite a process to get it approved. So yeah, okay. So that's but, not an issue. I, I, but that information is, is in that packet. And, and I think you'd find it interesting because that road does have quite a history. It's, it's an old military road, I believe, that was used during the Royalton Raid predating the Bailey Hazen road even. Um, really? So you might be interested in looking at those maps that were part of that package. Yeah. Anyone else? Questions, comments? I don't see anything more. How about you? Mike says nothing. John, how about you? Anything more? Um, just to go way back to the beginning, Paul, what what's the difference between a legal trail and a class four road? There's 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 no difference in from the perspective of the town's obligations to maintain it. I don't think there really is any difference. I think that it's more common when people call it a trail it's because it's a it's a walking path. But it, it's uh, uh, I've seen class fours that uh, look like uh, class twos and I've seen them that look like you can't see it. So, uh, I, but legally, I don't think there's a difference. I think the only difference is that it's, it's something that results from a hearing before the select board. And it's more likely than not that the legal trails could be re regulated as in prohibiting non-motorized traffic, for instance, but it can be done on a class four as well. And, and then there's all kinds of, you know, I mean, somebody's got builds a camp on a legal trail. So now can they drive up there when no one else can? Should there be a gate? There's a lot of fights over gates. Okay, you get the key, but I don't or whatever. And uh, who polices it? People don't like. Nobody wants to own the land at the end of the road because that's beer party time in the spring. So, but of course, you can regulate, you can enforce, you've got to enforce, you can't just ordain. And so you have to be ready to enforce if somebody does something untoward about it. If there was no regulation that prohibited the use of motorized vehicles on legal trails, you could end up with the uh, Peter Voller 100 vehicle Sunday morning visitation and end up with tremendous damage to the ecosystem and uh, erosion and uh, all kinds of things so it's 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 a uh, i think it's a 
it's an important duty of the select board to keep an eye on, on what things are actually being used in spite of what you may have ordered them to be done. I have one question. Um, when a legal, when a class three or four road is downgraded to a legal trail, uh, does it, well, you said it is the same thing as a class four road. So anyone is allowed unless we restrict it, we the select board restrict, you're allowed to do anything you want on it. Is that they correct? can drive a tank up there. Yep. Yep. Okay. We're up almost there. All right. And Paul? Go ahead, Joe. Is there, is there any other designation for a right of way the town controls or is it, are, are those all the, all the categories? Well, I mean, I suppose if this was a bar exam, I would say water rights, you know, water lines, so that sort of thing. But if we're talking about access, it's really, you really only need to, need to concern yourself with three, four and trails. Okay, great. And now in, over in New Hampshire, they have eight categories, <laughs> but they've, they've thought it through, I guess. So. <laughs> All right. I think we've exhausted this subject. Thank right. you, Paul. For I'm, I'm going to bow meeting. out then. Thanks yep. for inviting me to your meeting. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And we're going to move on. I'm going to go home. All right. Yeah. Thank you, George. Thanks very much. You guys. We want to excuse you. What's that? You're going to excuse you. Oh, right. Let's see. At 715, adoption of length from the field. Just sign it, Gary. All right. Thank you, George. Thanks. Thanks. You just have to sign it. What does LEMP stand for? The Local Emergency uh, Plan. You know. I know all about that stuff. It should be that first one right in your packet, Gary. He's messed up his packet, though. He's been shuffling, Mariah. You wouldn't believe it. My packet? Yeah. That's a different one. Good morning. A minute. How about that file? This is, I think this is ancient road stuff. It's all put together. Oh, that's. <laughs> Maybe it's here. No, that's just a figure. What did you do to that? I don't know. It's got to be, you must have. There's no lump for us. It was an ancient. Or a lump for us. No, no. Just in case he stapled anything in there. I saw it should have been there. before. It should have been before those yellow permits. Okay, Lynn. Yes. All right. Okay, you found it. <laughs> Underneath stuff. This this goes with it. Yeah. What we're doing is we're adopting <laughs> we're adopting what we had last year with minor changes, just updating the email address to the town officials. And I should make the long form one of these days, but I just ran out of steam. We've been working so hard on the school plan and Simon and I are gonna review the World's Fair plan. And when we get done, maybe I'll do the long. Okay. After that, I'll have the energy to put that together. So when I'm, when I'm gone, <laughs> someone else can figure it out. <laughs> it, well, at least it'll be spelled out. You should better sign it. You want to make a motion first? I make a motion that we sign the lent paper. Do you want to second that? Adopt the. Yep. To adopt the lent. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Nobody. All right. Local so emergency guys. management plan <laughs> municipal. I think I have to sign also. All right, there's no date or anything on it, but it does. Uh, put your date on it because we got a mess up on the last one. This, this is what dictates part of the percentage of refund we get on FEMA, that we have this plan in place before May 1st. Excellent. Brenda, are you gonna take that or do you just wanna leave it on the table and I can scan it and send it? I'm going to have you scan it and send it, and we're missing a couple of pages, which I'll add to it tomorrow morning. Okay. I'll, I'll download those and add it to it. Leave it on your um, 
in your box. Sounds good. This also, by the way, we're signing that we've adopted NIMS, which is the National Incident Management System, which you know you hear Simon and I talk about doing unified command. Mm -hmm. So that means our town has established that and we certify that. So that's smile upon us. All right. You must have them smile. Actually, I'm gonna have you sign that one too. Okay. Uh, Billy Smith, I see you have your hand up. Would you like to add something to this? No, I don't know how I did that. Sorry. I hear there's some kids in West Humbridge that call you grandma. <laughs> That's true. Gareth, Gareth told me that your name is Billy, though. <laughs> And all you need from us? That's really, that oh, I got one other quick one. Go for it. When we were, we've been uh, emergency Vermont, Emerg efficiency Vermont came today and we're gonna get in the person to look at the building and give oh. an estimate of everything, you know, what's needed. Yeah. It has, she said it has a lot of um, opportunity. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> But one of the things that when we're talking about any kind of backup power, this tree that's out here is split down the middle. Uh, luckily, Mariah has an in with one of the Green Mountain Power guys who feels very warm and fuzzy about us. And he said that they could top the tree and then we remove the rest of it. It's kind of intertwined in their guy wires. Oh. And oh, so he told me he would take the whole thing. He said, I'll oh, just get rid of the whole thing. I smiled for you. at him and I said, What about if you just take the whole thing down? Would you do oh, that? Oh, yeah, he will. And we'll clean it up. And he said, That we can make that work. All right. Thank you. So if you're okay with that, yes. we'll give them yeah, permission to Green Mountain Power to take that tree down around their guy wires. Yep. Was that the historic marker tree? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. any, any other trees in town, Mariah, we can take down while your the, the feelings warm and fuzzy? <laughs> He'll be warm and fuzzy forever, so we can uh, we can decide later on. But I'll let him know. He'll, he's will he been asking me all week, Is can I cut that tree down yet? And I said, not yet. I have to ask him. So uh, he'll be very excited. He'll probably be out here in two days cutting it down. We don't usually get this enthusiasm from them. <laughs> Thanks, Mariah. Thanks, Mario. <laughs> All right, next up is a town meeting warning. Have you seen a copy of this, John? Um, not night. We saw one early. We saw a draft, right, Mariah, earlier? Yeah, so you guys approved the draft last time, and then I added two articles just that were for. Um, I can't think of the exact wording right now. The last two that are on there, Gary, about the town grange and the fire department being the tax exemption. Um, cool. So I just added those two. Those were the only different ones. But if you guys want to sign them, then I can start hanging them up around town tomorrow. All right. We need a motion to accept the uh, warning for the town meeting or approve it. John, why don't you do this one? How about so move? John. I second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. All right. So there's three copies here. Oops. John, did you say aye? I did. I, I beat you to it. Yep. Um, there's three copies here, Mariah. Did we just sign them all? Yes, please. I'm going to just hang. I just wanted three originals. I figured you could just sign all three and I'll hang them around instead of reprinting them or copying them. Mariah, do those match what's in the town report? Yep. Yep. I, I updated it in time and sent it to Betsy. So they're identical. Okay, good. Need a 12th. Yes. I'm going to date this the 12th day of April. 
2022. All right. You'll have to come in and sign it, John, or something. Will they be at the office, Mariah? What's that? The Your th these three originals? One will be at the office. I will um, have it in the hallway. And then I was gonna do one at the library and one at the post office. Um, and I'll, I might make a copy just to keep one of the originals, but um, yeah, they'll be, that's where I was gonna disperse them. I was gonna put one on the website. I was probably gonna put one on front porch forum and just really get them out. Do you want me to go around at 2 a.m. and secretly sign them? Sure, yeah, if you want to. Right. <laughs> if you'll be secretly out at 2 a.m., that's an odd that's time. Right. But Probably maybe... not. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right, Fern it, Strong. If I, if I think of it, I'll sign them. Yeah. Okay. Fern Strong, do you have your hand up or is it a mistake? Thank you. This is not answering. We'll move on then. Washington Electric Permit. So those are those yellow ones. I think they're duplicates. Um, they might be identical, but one might be for us to keep and one might be for them to keep, but it's just a permit request. Stafford Road, Helms Road, next up. So they're just putting them in line. <laughs> yeah, John, they're, they're putting up, uh, they're proposing to put up a new line along Stratford Road from Randy Tullers up through the Bucky's, uh, up to the Baptist Hill Road and Sporn Drive. You think that's a good idea? I don't know. It's kind of a, I, I, even now, I can't even figure out the, the weirdness of those spurs that come you know, up from the Stratford Road and then over the hill from Stratford and down. I know that right around Bucky's and Young's, I think that goes up and, you know, comes over to our place and Moral Road. And then like, but the Sweeney's at the, you know, yep. your your grandfather's is, is yep. on a different spur. So it's, it's weird. So if there's some way, to, if there's some way to streamline that, I guess that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I think that's what they intend, probably. Who is this? Is this WEC or Green Mountain Power? WEC. Okay. So technically, the power is coming from the top of the hill down through, not the way I described it. it... But I think that Ken, <coughs> at Ken Danvers at the old Danford place and Sweeney's at Mullen's old place, um, right, those are coming up the hill, actually. Right. And I know with internet, it, that's all been different. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a way to combine them or they're going to just cut out a <clears throat> oxbow. Well, maybe that's what they're going to do because they're, they're proposing to put a new line along Stratford Road to right. connect point A to point B. Right. So I think yeah. they're trying to and they're probably running it up the road so they can see it better. Right. Maintain yep. it. That's what they like to do now. So yeah. I guess I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I am. I am. All right. Do we need a do we need a motion or are you just sign on? I guess we could have a motion to sign this permit. Um, I make a motion to sign the Washington Electric permit for work on the back of road. <clears throat> I second it. Wow, well, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. So. Dated at Cambridge. Look at that. Look at that. The trains, Dave. All right, next, B Trans Grant possible action. 
You've okay. already, um, that's the one that Rodney talked to you about. You already signed, so yeah. that one's all set. All right. Wow. ARPA fund reporting due 430. Yeah, so um, on the 30th of this month, I have to do our first ARPA report. Um, I took a webinar about it the other day and everybody at Two Rivers and um, Sarah Rate, who we're gonna have come next meeting, um, they all said that we need to, let me get the correct wording here, take the standard allowance um, towns that are getting less than $10 million, which is I think every town except Burlington, um, is allowed to take this standard allowance, which is number six or something. And it means that we have so much more flexibility on what we spend it on because it's considered we're taking it as a loss. So then we can basically use it for anything. There's not as much of guidelines on it. Um, but I just needed to get your approval before the 30th to go ahead and take that standard allowance. We'll still have to do reporting the same way, but it just gives us more freedoms of how we're going to spend our money. Um, and I do have like some parameters and stuff I can show you at next meeting of it's, there's a big long list now of all the things that you can use, but if I could just gravel. buy gravel, I don't know. There's, there's 18 pages. I didn't see gravel in there, but it's possible that it would be. Um, and like I said, Sarah Rate will be coming to our next meeting, so you can ask her about that as well. Um, but in the meantime, if you just want, if that's okay with you, if you want to make a motion, so when I file on Thursday, I can accept make, that standard allowance. I make a motion that um, we have Mariah file the after fund report on April 30th. <laughs> Does that work, Mariah? Well, to just to as long as you're allowing me to take the standard allowance, then that's fine when I do my reporting. That's what he said. That's what I said. Okay, perfect. Then yes, that works. Then I Thank second you. it. All right. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 All right, next. <clears throat> We're ripping things right off now. Audit review, Betsy Race. Betsy Race, would you step forward? <laughs> there she I, is. Back in uh, 2019, we had a full audit by Sullivan and Powers and Company. And it was recommended that we do a review in a couple of years, which isn't quite as um, involved as the initial audit. So it doesn't cost quite as much. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it will cost. What I'm asking you is to okay that request. We are requesting that audit review, the auditors are, and that that request go in this week. I thought we did a full audit every other year and a half audit. I think that was our intention. When did you say the last full audit was done, Betsy? 2019. You know, COVID hit, guys. Uh, right. I would have it last year. Didn't we do a review? No, I'm asking for the review. Oh, I thought when we originally signed them up, they did a full yeah. audit and then they, they came back and did a review or did it never happen because they, of COVID? They did originally, John, the year after we did our first full audit. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we did a review the next year and then we did right. another full audit. Okay. I believe. Not with Sullivan and Powers. Really? Really? Huh. Well, I make a motion that we do a review. I just don't think we need a full audit, no. but if you want yeah, to do it that way, because it has been a while, that's fine. But I think we ought to schedule a full audit for like next year, shouldn't we? What do we budget for? 
next year. <clears throat> we have the paperwork right here. I was hoping you might do something this year. This this fiscal year? Yeah. Um, how long if does they, it take? If they do? can fit it in. Yeah, that's going to be the problem, isn't it? I don't know. I have not contacted anybody. Um, and I don't know if did we did we put aside some funds for a review or an audit this year? I know we've been sort of consistently putting them aside, but what, what would that be under? <coughs> Mr. Stuff? I'm not listening. No, 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 it's just for their stuff. It, the review the review cost like what like five thousand and the audit was like twelve or something like that yeah something like that five or eight town yeah. audit we got fifteen thousand dollars down for that twenty three what is that under um slot board expenses that's for the upcoming year Mike. Um, no, that's the one. Oh, that's for, for the one we're that's in. This, that's this year. Wow, we got enough money. Yeah, I thought oh. <laughs> I thought we had it all set up so we were gonna do a full audit one year and a review the next year, right? Well, you were going to, Mike, it didn't happen. I think again, 2019 got done in 2020, right? The yeah. audit, even though it was right. a 2019 fiscal year, it didn't get done until 20. Right. right. And then COVID hit for 21 right. and 22 here, right. 20 and 21. Um, okay. So we never did do the review. Well, which, well, my recommendation is we get back on schedule, and if you want to do a review this year, if you can fit it in um, before July 1st, um, that will be good. If not, then maybe we ought to have a full audit next year right. after July 1st. Yep. It really doesn't matter to me. It's just time to do something. Yeah, well, I don't want this. I don't want it to go five, six years without an audit, outside audit. No. So I'm leaving it up to you. But do you have to make a motion in any way, or we? Yeah, just... I make a motion that um, the auditors contact the outside auditors to either get a review this fiscal year or schedule a full audit for next fiscal year. Is that right? Is that what I want to say? So if they do a review, it will be for fiscal year? Be 21, right? Yep. 20, 20. No. If you do it before July 1st, it'll have to be for 20. Right. Yeah. Right? I think so. Well, 20, 20, it's hard 21. To, we're on fiscal year 21. Right? Okay. Well, 21, 22. Right. Yeah. So it'll be 20. It, usually, so 21. Usually, 2021. 20, right. Or full for 21 22. That's correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Do you second that, John? I do. Right. All in favor say aye. 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 And I'd like to also try to keep this rolling. Betsy? Yep. You know, whatever we do this year, then next year do the other thing. Right. Okay. Thank you, boys. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. All right, police. Oh, policy for honoring Timberjarians. 
John O'Brien. <clears throat> I guess you're up, John. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, I, I still like to work towards honoring Euclid somehow. I don't know quite what shape that would take. Um, and where we are with say Priscilla, but um, just keep keep moving in that direction. And I thought, well, if we're gonna do that, it it would make sense to me to set up as we've done with some of these other things, some sort of policy for consistency. So going forward, you know, if Tunbridge wanted to have a Mike McPetris Bridge or a Gary Mullen Culvert, right? There'd be a process to do it with um you know a hearing or a town wide vote or something like that or, or just leave it up to select board but it just just so it's consistent so well beyond our time at the select board you know future select boards would, would um would follow the same same kind of i guess policy would it be for people who have died <laughs> yeah i think so there yeah memorial yeah well i want so whether, yeah. whether it's <clears throat> That you know, naming naming after a, a piece of property or a feature or you know a scholarship, any of those things, whether you know if it was a, a town thing to be decided on, that we just have a consistent policy, sort of like we'll have a townwide vote or we'll have hearings or the select board will what if you know, we um, have a, a pup. what if we um <laughs> Have a new road made somewhere and then name it after somebody. Yeah, there you go. Well, we pave a road. We have the Justin Morrill Highway. Mm -hmm. That's right. Another road on the other side of town that leads to Randolph. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a great yeah, idea. Um, I, on a rare occasion, I get a morning off. I like to watch the, the Sunday morning show on at nine o'clock on Channel Three because they've got now so that they flash the names of people who died in the last week, mostly old people, famous people, whatever. Yeah. On the, the tail end of the, of the year, the, the, the calendar year, they do a whole segment on that. And there's so many people that die that I just, man, I forgot about that one. Right. And I think if we could do it somehow, just either state the name or maybe put their picture in the town report or something. Yeah. It might be kind of neat. Yeah. And you know, for certain certain people who've just been extra special at Tunbridge, to somehow honor them. And you know, I don't know what shape that would take, right? Whether it would be a, you know, the a memorial building, bridge, whatever, or forest, or write a scholarship if it, you know, whatever really sort of appropriately fits that that person's special contributions to Tunbridge. Who's going to be in charge? Like the Edith. Like Edith Grant, right? Right. Who's going to be in charge of writing this policy? Um, I was thinking, Mariah, could you get in touch with the, <laughs> the league maybe and see, you know, if other towns have something like this? Yeah, I can also, um, I'll also send an email out to the, the town clerk listserv and see if anybody oh, has right. something because they're pretty great about being like, oh yeah, here's my policy right. and sending it over. That would be great. Nice. Do we want to start off by naming this tree out here, the Mariah Silly Memorial Tree? Perfect. And then chop it down like in two days. <laughs> the Memorial Stump. Let's yeah, start. great. <laughs> or you get, yeah, I think a, a, you get to I pick think the that's thing. a good idea, John, to do get something in place that's kind of consistent. Yeah. Yes, Mariah, don't let us forget that. Yeah, I will. I will work on it. All right, next is other business. We're way ahead of schedule. Um, I know, we're flying. I have two things. Um, one thing, let's see where I put it in my packet, is um, I was emailed by Phyllis Hayward, who is the Chelsea flea market coordinator. And she was asked by the flea market committee if it would be possible to have Tunbridge advertise their flea market on our sign outside. And I said that I would, um, I would ask you guys if 
that was something fine to do. Uh, it's on July 9th, so I would, I'm assuming it'd be like the week before that they'd want to have a notice on there. Hmm. Who's the sponsor of that, Mariah? Is it? It's not the town of Chelsea, is it? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It just. She just said she was the Chelsea flea market coordinator, and she was asked by her committee if we could have it on the sign. She didn't it used say. To be the church. <laughs> Can you find out? Sure. I mean, if it's if it's you know kind of a Chelsea thing, yeah, like town of Chelsea. That's one thing. I don't. I just or it, church or something. Um, just we want to avoid you know somebody else coming in and then saying, well, you did it for the flea market. Why don't you do it for right? You know, this somewhat <laughs> somewhat private event. Happy birthday, Gary or, Mullen, flashing on the screen. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Only not. And, you know, whether, right, if it's the church or it's if it's, if it, because, <laughs> once again, that, that'd almost be like a policy type thing where if it's a not for profit, that's one thing, but we just got to be careful not to right. get into the advertising business. I agree. Um, and then I also, um, a grant opportunity came across my desk. Um, from Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District that they are doing um, up to $5,000 per town um, for their transfer station that we could use for like special collection events, infrastructure for vehicle or equipment, um, supplies, uh, infrastructure for our local facility, technical assistance, things like that. So I was thinking with our yeah, other- yeah okay i just wanted to get your approval to go ahead and, and apply for that um because i was thinking we could use it for a new container for the overflow or whatever it was that we've right. been talking about yeah even if we had like a large item day where people had a count for something, have that once a year yeah exactly Anything else? That's all I had for um, for other business this week. Next week we'll have Sarah Rate come, um, and we also have the Megan Asbury, who's the Four Town Coalition person. She will also be coming to at the meeting. Oh, um, Gary and Mike, em Emily um, wanted to start up clogging and social dance at the fairgrounds again but um, as we heard now the fairgrounds are requiring contracts yeah and he, since he Emily's is not you know a not for, Emily's not a not-for-profit you know just a community service kind of thing so I guess um, our only alternative is to move move back into the town hall if that's okay with you guys Doug Giles told me that they're requiring contracts even if they didn't require money. I mean, I don't care. Right. Exactly. All right to go back in the town hall as far as I'm concerned, but they, he said even if we wanted, if the town wanted to do something, we'd have to sign a contract, even if there yeah. was no money. Didn't involved. we for town meeting? Yeah, we did sign a yeah. contract for town meeting. Yeah. And it's, even it's, though I think connected no also money but you well, need some sort of insurance, which the town right has, but individuals just doing stuff on the fairgrounds probably are going to be in a pickle now. Huh. I guess you've got the okay to be in a town hall. Okay, well, we'll let you know. And, and do you know when they turn off the furnace there? I can huh. ask Judy. No, we don't need a furnace. I was just wondering. Emily just didn't want to waste, you know, furnace oil. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess I do have one other thing to add. Um, I got a phone call over the weekend um, about uh, the Densmore's dogs and animals and horses again. Um, and then I asked her just to send me an email synopsis. Um, so I was just talking about the horses not having adequate feed and being loose and coming into her yard and the dogs that 
are always in her trash and eating, um, you know, stuff in her yard and uh, attacked her cat and uh, a couple of cats that they have that probably should have medical attention. Um, she said that the sheriff came up there but didn't even do anything, just didn't even go on the property. And uh, now they also have some trash that is attracting a couple bears that they've already had out there getting into the garbage. So I said, send me an email, send me the pictures that you have, things like that, I'll add it to the document. But I guess my question at this point is, we as a town, I feel like this has been an ongoing, ongoing, ongoing issue. We don't have an animal control officer. We've reached out to the Orange County Sheriff's. They're, they haven't done anything about it. What, what is our next step? Should I reach out to the state police? What do we, you know, I've sent letters about registering the dogs. They haven't been registered. Uh, I've sent letters saying that there's a fine for not registering the dogs and having them on the property. Obviously the fines don't get paid. What would you like to do moving forward? Do you know if we have a, a, a policy or ordinance about animals running them up? <clears throat> yeah, uh, we definitely do. Your, your dogs and uh, pets and things like that have to stay on your property. Um, I know that you and I were talking, Gary, about, you know, a cow's not a pet, a cow's cattle, but is a horse a pet type of thing? So I don't know where the horses fall in that. She said that they eat, you know, she has pictures of them eating out of the manure pile because they don't have any food. Um, they don't have adequate shelter. <laughs> he seems to be very concerned about it. And so I, I obviously, we do have a policy about dogs and cats and things like that not being, you know, off the owner's property. Um, I don't know where horses fall into that. If you would consider a horse a pet, um, like we've talked about their llama and well, things even, like that as even well. Even if it wasn't a pet, you have to keep a fence. Well, exactly. Whether so, it's a cow or a llama or a horse. But do we have an right. owner? Well, or probably, we probably a state. That's probably a state it's, order. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely like... Oh, there's a state. There's a state ordinance for... I mean, there's a state statute for you know certain animal um i mean if it's if it lurches into animal cruelty then that's you know like horses have no food or no water then that that could trigger a humane investigation animal cruelty investigation by a humane officer so i just asked the state police about you know if there was a list of local humane officers and i i haven't heard back i mean they said oh like it's sort of strange they haven't even thought of doing this geographically i mean i think a lot of the vermont state police officers have taken the training course or some of them have so we could start there with the royals and barracks but there are other you know certified humane officers whether they worked at humane societies or they were animal control officers who just wanted to go to the next step like you know our con some towns constables go for further training um, so I was just hoping to get a list of, you know, mm -hmm. for all of Vermont, but, you know, say you're in the town of Dumbridge and within 30 miles of here, you know, who are certified humane officers. It's not like there, there's real requirements for that now. It's not something like you just, you know, you call yourself a humane officer. Um, so, but I maybe start with the state police and see if they have certified humane officers and that, that at least they could come out and and see if it's an animal cruelty situation. Okay, and then she also wanted me, because of the trash and things like that, should I call Jody Hoyt to go up there and look at the garbage issue? Okay. Um, does it seem like a health? I mean, that's what she was saying that all winter long, they, I mean, I don't know personally, this is just what I'm hearing that they pile it out behind their house and now it's just getting, bears and animals and things into it and strewn about. So, I mean, trash outside of a house seems like a health officer issue. It does, yeah. Yep, I would say yes. Okay. Are Gary and, oh, are you guys frozen or are you just quiet? <laughs> 
<laughs> We're frozen. Okay. <laughs> no comment. Okay. Uh, anything else? We've got to sign warrants and uh, approve minutes. <coughs> have you had a chance? Oh, to I'm falling that? behind on minutes again. <coughs> There's only what, one. What minutes do I have to do? There's only one. Okay. And, and I mean, if Mike wants to read them, they're right there in front of him. If he wants to read them and then we can sign them tonight. The March, March 22. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if they're online, Mariah, I can look at them. Yep, they're online. Okay, for March 22? Yep. Okay. All right. Any other other business? Do, do we? Uh, Mariah, go ahead, Gary. Um, I, I just wondered if, if we, Mike and I can sit here and, and uh, sign these uh, warrants after the meeting is done, or do we have to sit here and bore you guys with signing them? <laughs> we, we could make a motion just like you've done them in the past, Gary. Okay. Well, we'd be happy to do that. What did you want to say, John, before I interrupt him? Oh, uh, Mariah, who knows who's in charge of taking the, uh, I got your email about that woman who was concerned about the food scraps bins being full. Who, who actually takes it away? Is it Grove Vermont? It used to be Grove Vermont, but it is now taken over by Casella. I don't know when that transition oh. happened, but it's now Casella. Um, so maybe really? that's why yeah. it is full now because there was a lapse in between um, yeah. who's taking it. I'm sorry, I'm not more. I, I just, I never hear from Mike. I never have the word on like when the it's full and you always seem to like have the all the information about it. So I well, had people it was call me and say, you know, is this full still? And I said, I didn't even know it was full in the first place. So right, but unlike unlike the the roll offs, you know, he doesn't really check in on whether it's full or not. He just says like, I think it was that, you know, on Wednesday sometimes they're pretty full, but by the Saturday they're they're empty again, and he has yeah. an extra an extra, you know, trash barrel if there's overflow, but it seems that it's not reacting so much to the flow of food scraps as in that Casella must just get it once a week. And I don't, I don't know if they do it with their, when they come for the roll-offs or if they just have a little mini, mini vehicle that comes by and gets it. Yeah. I'm not sure either. I guess we could ask, ask Mitch Taylor maybe. Okay. And I don't know, you know, if we need a, a third bin sometimes or not. I or how. Well, that, you know, actually, what that? Um, I don't know what they use for a bin. If it's is it just like a bin with a lid on it that has yeah. some holes mm -hmm. in it for air? So we right. are getting a new um, tabulator for elections, and so we have oh, yeah. a new um, bin for the ballots to go into. So the old one that's at the town hall right now. They're not taking, it's the towns. So if you want to take that or somebody wants to grab that and use it as a third compost container, okay. I mean, it has no purpose at this point. And that's what a lot of the other towns are using them for. That so, sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Because it, it has little wheels and like it's more yeah, of it has a little wheels one. and the lid goes up and down and there's a yep. hole for where the um, ballots would go in. Perfect. <laughs> Like for him to be a skunk who's going to get its head, a raccoon will get its head stuck. Probably, yeah. Okay. Any other business? Any even if we just use it for overflow. Yeah. I think I did, but I can't remember what it was. So. All right. Um, if someone makes a motion that Mike and I can sign these things, we'll sign off. So moved. Unless you guys want to just sit there and watch us. <laughs> <laughs> that was a kind of a poor laugh. Yeah, no, I'll, we can definitely sign off. That's fine. Wait a second, that. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. Got some paint he wants to watch dry. Who does? 
if you'd rather watch paint dry than watch those guys sign warrants, I think. Oh, that's yeah. True. She wants to watch the history of Oak Island. I do, Gary. It's going to be interesting good tonight. Effect they, find. they probably find the toothpick or something tonight. Probably. <laughs> it's. I have a whole hour to amp myself up about it. Put on my my sweatshirt that says the curse of Oak Island. Oh, it's, it's on at nine o'clock? Holy smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Anticipation is growing. Boy, is. Did they find it? Yeah. They, they found anything new? Yeah. Um, they, they're oh, drilling oh, and oh, they yeah. think that they have found yeah, an old exactly. shaft. So, yeah, fucking yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. getting serious. <laughs> All right. I don't see anything else that we have to hang on for. Uh, okay. Is our meeting adjourned? Well, someone needs to make a motion. To I make a motion that the meeting is adjourned. <laughs> I second it. All right. I third it. All right, thank you for attending. Yes, thank you. I hope that your cold 